everybody. Welcome to Linux Cast. I'm your host, Matt. And I'm Stefan. And I'm Tyler. What's up? Welcome, everybody, to Linux Cast. We talk about Linuxy things. That's what we usually do. Uh, we're minus Josh this week. He got called out for something or the other. I don't really know all the details. Don't need to know. He just is off. He's probably off bothering somebody. He's going to get banned, I'm assuming. I mean, just his track record assumes that he's going to get banned from something while he's out and about. Uh, anyways, like I said, we talk about Linuxy things. Like always, we're going to talk about some Linux news. We got some good stuff for you this week. But before we jump into that, we talk about what's been going on in our world of FOSS on our personal level this this in this week. I can't talk, so it's going to be a really you know one of those episodes. Words are freaking please don't, hard. Please don't have a stroke. Please don't have a stroke. No, I don't think it's that bad. It's just words are hard. So, Tyler, why don't you tell us what you've been up to this week in open source? Well, um, uh, I've been away from the house watching some dogs. So uh, when I had a chance to be at my computer reliably, uh, I've just been, you know, getting a little, little fried, getting pretty, pretty stony baloney. <laughs> and then uh, I've been uh, back using Gemini, um, which for everyone who has no idea what Gemini is other than the rocket, um, Gemini is like an alternative like web protocol. Uh, it's very minimal. It's essentially text only. Um, but it, it is text only. Uh, and it uses a very, very slim down markdown uh format uh and gemini is actually like there's plenty of people who use it it's very nice uh a lot of creators used to have uh gemini capsules a couple years ago but a lot of their uh capsules have which by the way gemini websites are referred to as capsules um they they used to have them but they've just kind of went unmaintained because most people weren't really most people you you were using gemini for like blogging and stuff like that and so it was a really fun place to go and just read and search but like if you were looking for something to wait like i would like to where for most of your like web browsing and like finding info like through a search engine where you're just trying to find like how to do something a guide or maybe a little bit of documentation. Uh, it's just not available on Gemini. Um, so one of the things that I'm doing on my capsule to try and help alleviate that is I'm actually making a massive repos uh, a repository of different resources. Uh, so you can go there and search different things. And I'm also looking into making a Reddit style um, like web app thing, but for Gemini. Uh, so people can go and use a essentially you are Reddit, really into on there. gemini yeah uh, well just so you know how 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 convinced i am that this needs to be done and it would be a fantastic thing for everybody is uh i've already like converted over mostly by hand uh like half the gen 2 amd 64 handbook um and some quite and quite a few related pages and then i have a few very like useful like um uh different articles from the web that i've essentially paraphrased or just copied and linked back to uh, at the bottom um so it's available over there and i think uh if a whole bunch of other people start doing this gemini can can definitely be used as something where you only really use your browser for those beefy freaking web apps like you know, like, or, or going to, you know, websites that make sense for something like the web, like, you know, Patreon, where you're going to do like financial stuff or manage or a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. Like YouTube, like, you know, like essentially using it for like what the web has now become, which is essentially just web. So basically apps, you are fighting really for, uh, for a better open web. Yes. And also one of the things that this is really not um, something that affects me because I do have pretty damn good internet out here as much as we joke around about it my internet is very good compared to a lot of people's and i do understand that and i'm very appreciative of my internet but for those who don't have good internet um the web is starting to get to a point where it's really really hard to browse efficiently even I do, for I just do agree i do agree when since i am one who has better internet uh, i do agree that some pages uh, are a hassle because they contain so many video ads, so many uh, animated GIF ads, uh, so many uh, animations, effects, and everything that is useless for a good web uh, web browsing experience. 
So if uh, yeah, what you're the, saying is true that Gemini takes all this distraction away, I don't see yeah. why not users should uh, start using it. And and one of the biggest things is for people on low internet, like you got to think about it when you look at most just general like websites, like the websites will pull up like nine to five Linux, like just different websites like that. A lot of like the navigation on the website is is taken up by photos and all of that's implemented in JavaScript. And there's there's just a lot of bandwidth being eat up just just to navigate the page, not even display and, and the information. There's a, there's a nice feature if I don't know if uh, uh, <laughs> my brain is uh, frozen right now, uh, but if anybody has noticed it, but uh, in Vivaldi, there's a feature in the ad in the address bar. It shows you this how many megabytes the size uh, mm -hmm. of each website is. So uh, I, I go to news websites to, to to read the news, the daily news, the local news here. The local the local news websites here have it worse than CNN. Because CNN is uh, is considered one of the most ad bloated websites out there, news websites it out is. there. Well, come to our local ones. Uh, the text is this long; it's just six lines, but you have to scroll for a minute to get to it. Why? Because you got ad pop ups over uh, all over the place because they want to make money. And not only that, they yeah. charge you eight dollars if you want to watch the whole entire news. Uh, after the fact, the news episode of uh, the previous day, you want to watch the whole episode, it's on YouTube, but it's unlisted. So uh, if you want to watch it in its entirety, you have to uh, subscribe for eight bucks a month. But anyway, uh, besides, besides that, uh, the size of that website, I measured it. The size of that website is 230 megabytes every time you load. Oh, fun. So Tyler, I have so a couple questions I understand where you. you're coming from. <laughs> Well, mm -hmm. so yeah. first question, why not create like a Python script to scrape the websites that you want to use instead of because, like copy and pasting? Uh, what you, because uh, what you don't, uh, some people don't think about is some websites are so No, no, I meant more designed. of the, like the Gen 2 one and the Arch Wiki and stuff, the ones that you don't have to. Oh, well, yeah, okay. So but regular very websites. Simply, the very simply, there's a lot of a lot of really good formatting done to the Gentoo wiki and there's not all, a pre-made script for uh, scraping the site for the text and then like converting the HTML to Gemini uh, that I, I really like uh, and also works for some of the specific stuff that are on those wikis like if you think about it in, in the wikis there's like notes and like like uh, the Gentoo wiki, for example, like there will be like notes that are like, you know, they, they're like blue or a uh, tip is like green mm -hmm. or something. And they uh, and then there's like warnings. Well, I need I need warnings are red and they're very important that you read them. So like I need to do something special to delineate those from other notes or tips, um, because, again, I can't color code and do all super fancy stuff. So. Like one of the things that I do is um, uh, I uh, I format it where the warnings have like an, a red exclamation emoji in them. So they'll catch your attention compared to the other ones. Um, and then there's a few other special things like that that just. So basically you have to do a lot better. of work to convert the very heavily designed Stop. websites to Gemini. No, I mean, it, for, if we're being honest, if, if you're not trying to, if you're not trying to make something extremely high quality, and you're fine with a pretty decent, decently formatted website uh, with nothing, with, with nothing even close to fancy going on, as much fanciness that you can get with just text and markdown. Uh, Basically, it's, it's kind of like org mode for uh, the part when DT made a video about org mode converting websites to org mode or something. It becomes a very simple, like 90s style website with no styling, no nothing. It's just yeah. markdown. Yeah. It, it's, oh, a, it, it's essentially but the it's same. But it's in a terminal but... format instead of being in an actual browser. Yeah. For most websites, I there is actually a 
if you go to if you start searching the Gemini protocol on the web, they have a normal website and a Gemini site as well. Um, but you can find uh, they do actually have a list of a whole bunch of different tools like clients and then a whole bunch of just different stuff. Like there is actually a, a Git front end that you can install so you can track Git repos on Gemini. Um, uh, I tried messing around with that and the Go build failed for me, but w whatever. Um, but they do have tools for converting HTML to Gemini. And for most websites, I'll probably just use that. But right now when I'm working on wikis, I really want to make sure the formatting is absolutely That's correct. That's a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah, it, it really is. I've spent like the past two days, probably like eight hours a day working on it. And I've only got like I haven't made that much progress. On I the tip my hat to you, sir, for good uh, for work well done, all for the Thank you. for the well being of the uh, open source community. Thank you. Uh, also, I I will say I do have just a regular old BS journal where like I pretty much blog there. So if you want to check that out, who you doesn't can. who doesn't have that? I have that. Exactly. Oh, TechZero.com. You know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everyone's got to have a little blog, you know. It's just got to yeah, happen. It's, it's it, part of life. It's part of life. Yeah. All right, Steve, what have you been up to this week in open source? Thank you for asking, sir. Uh, I've been uh, up to a lot. Uh, I can tell you right now, my brain has been Pythoned out. Uh, I've been watching Python videos <laughs> for the past few days uh, to learn how to code in Python. Uh, but the video I found, I guess, is the wrong video to follow because all the guy does in Python is arithmetic. One plus one, uh, if uh, if grade is 80, then it's A or less than, more than, equals. Oh, it's it's a lot of uh, math and mathematical formulas and and stuff just to explain Python. It's a five-hour video at the, that, it, that took me two days to watch. Uh, but I got lost after the f first three minutes. Uh, but I can, I'm, keep, I'm watching it still. Maybe something will stick because hear me out. A lot of people came uh, on your server, came at me. I was talking about that on the pre-show. Uh, came at me uh, saying that, you, you know you can turn Zero Linux into a script like DTOS or something. I was like, yes, I know we can and they all want me to ditch Calamaris. It's, it's, a, it's an attack on Calamaris because Calamaris is not the friendliest or not friendliest. Uh, it is the friendliest, but it's not the uh, an installer without issues and issues that really are annoying. Uh, so they want me to ditch uh, Calamaris. So I started hunting for Arch install-like scripts because it offer they offer more flexibility only in the zero world in the zero linux world it will only offer zero linux kde it will not give the open like the arch install script it doesn't have a profile for desktop and then in desktop it has kde it got xfce gnome and all the desktop environments under the sun it's just going to have zero linux kde i'm going to limit it to that or else let them use arch install so uh, I'm working uh, on an idea like that for the far future, not the near future. But I need to, if I if I am to 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 dive into all this stuff, I need to learn Python because it's all Python, Python this, Python that. It, it's coming, it, it's starting to come up my nose, uh, this Python thing. So I decided to start learning instead of bitching about it, like uh, like a grown man should. <laughs> uh, but I've had the mentality of a kid for for uh, of a pig-headed kid for for, for two years. Uh, it's about time to grow up and sh shut up and grow up uh, and start learning uh, a new language, something useful. Uh, put my time to to use. Uh, so I'm learning Python, and so far I didn't understand a word. I'm trying. I, it took me two days. I, it took me one day to watch. It took me five hours to watch the video, but it took me two days because I've been watching it over and over and over and over and over again to understand one thing. I keep getting stuck at at uh, at minute five. Minute five. 
I completely lose uh, understanding. I don't. I start. I don't understand anything. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I need to watch it maybe a million times to start understanding something past minute five. But that's why I'm saying this is a, a plan for the future, for the very far future. <laughs> Because to me, to start being able to use very basic Python, it might take me five years. At the pace I'm going, it might take me five years. Um, uh, are you, hold on, I, I do just want to quickly ask, are you watching like... Uh, classroom kind of stuff. Okay, stop. Uh, I, I, and, I, and I'll tell you this, with programming, what I found out, if you want to learn quickly and you want to learn like... I wouldn't say the best way, but if you want to learn quickly and be able to make small stuff for yourself the fastest, don't watch how to's like guy, like general guides that get you into the language and teach you all the syntax and everything. Just go straight into what search for super simple Python guides to make like specific little programs like uh, a, a, a calculator or um you know, uh, a, a random, an advanced random number generator and just follow along with them. And as you're going, you'll end up with a whole bunch of different things that you can, for one, you could say you've made, but also as you go, you'll learn more and more of how each thing does what. And if you don't learn something right away when you're doing it, it doesn't really matter. Just keep pushing a forward. And eventually you'll get to a point where you're revisiting those things or you start learning why, like why that syntax is that way or, you know, whatever. Because a lot of people that I talk to ab about Python, they tell me it's a very simple syntax that that is very close to bash. Uh, mm. No, in, in, in its some simplicity, ways, it's in, in its other simplicity, ways, no. not the same language. I'm not no, saying no, no, they didn't yeah, we, say. We understood what you, you meant, Steve. But I'm just trying to <laughs> come from the people who told you that, trying to figure out how they come to that conclusion. Like, yeah, in, in some ways, but in other ways, no. <laughs> because I mean, I would say it. They do share the simplicity for if statements and elif statements. It's the same thing in Bash that it is in uh, Python. Mm, okay. Very similar. Very uh, close. Kind of. Very close. <laughs> Very close. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I guess. I, I guess I never really thought to compare those two together. Because I wrote I a mean, lot like, of, I wrote a lot, I wrote a lot of if statements in my scripts uh, recently. Yeah. Uh, and when I was watching the video and I reached the conditional part in Python, conditional mm -hmm. statements, as they call it, uh, it was very similar. I was like, okay, if this, then that, and at the end, if you use elif, you can use elif as uh, as many times as you want, but the last one has to be else without a semicolon or what you call it, a dot comma, whatever semicolon you call it, uh, the comma, yeah. dotted comma, uh, yeah. uh, a semicolon. There is no semicolon. There is no then after that. It, Else yeah. is the last statement. It's exactly like that in Bash. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I was like, I yeah, I can write that in Python, but there's a lot of things that are supposed to be this long in Bash, but the advantage of Python, you can condense it into a single command. The the only thing I will say that you'll find, uh, you'll find with programming is uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really, when you're first starting, share your scripts like publicly with a ton of people because I know a lot of people do that and then they end up getting a whole bunch of people uh, complaining about their use of LF statements in their beginner programs. And just so you know, a lot of people will tell you that you need to start using like case statements or switches oh, or yes. stuff. Oh, yes, that's what they said. Uh, uh, this is the, the part yeah. I was talking about in Python. <laughs> yeah, so just so case you know. Case and range, uh, case and range. I, I know it's the same in uh, C sharp, and I'm pretty sure it, it's true in Python as well. I'm like ninety percent sure. Don't I, I mean, ever I don't know. I take anyone's wrong. criticism over your script seriously, okay? Because they yeah. were all beginners at one point too, and if they get all hoity-toity on your beginner scripts, they can go fuck themselves, okay? Well, <laughs> I agree one hundred percent with that statement. The, the dumb part about people getting upset about if else statements is in most programming not in most but in a lot of programming languages and true it's i'm 90 percent true it's 
uh, it's it is with python when it's actually ran at runtime it, if else statements are actually automatically ran or excuse me case case or switch statements are ran as if else statements so there is actually there there is some improvements with using them but uh only at a massive scale like if you've got like eight of them like yeah it doesn't look pretty at all but it it's really the not going to affect the most i ever had in my scripts were two or three also yeah like i mean when you're when you're learning programming the one thing that you can learn that crosses every single language is that there are 25,000 ways of doing everything okay yes one way is, of doing one way of, of the, doing one, something one doesn't of the make arguments it, of someone yeah it doesn't make it one way one way wrong or right. It's just another way of doing something. Yes, there are more efficient ways of doing something. So if you remember Terminal for Life, he always harped on efficiency in his code or in his bash yeah. scripts, right? No. You know, that was his way of doing things. It doesn't make the other ways of doing it wrong. It's just, you know, different. So, all right. So uh, I, no, too I have want to been... say one last thing. Go ahead. I, I want to say one last thing. Uh, I just want to ask you guys. Which is the best method to tackle things? This idea, I mean. Have in Zero Linux a. Uh, I want to. The point. I, I want the uh, chat to chime in too as well. This is interacting with chat. I don't have the uh, the chat in front of me, but I want to ch uh, to interact with chat and ask all of you, the the host, co-host, the chat, everyone. What do you think is a good idea for a distro, not Zero Linux, just a distro in general? To provide a, a, a simple installer, which is Calamares, and a, a advanced installer, which is an Arch install like base script, or create two separate ISOs, one with just Calamares and one for the advanced people that has no live environment, just TTY, and the Arch install like script. Do whatever is best for uh, the developer. Well, yeah, no, not, but I'm don't, talking for the users. I'm don't, talking don't, point of view for, for don't the users. Don't kowtow to the users ever because you're never going to make everybody happy. So do whatever one works best yeah. for you. At the end of the day, you're making it. So, But what I would say is if you are going to go with the the advanced install and it it is just an install script that it's does an stuff. Arch install script that will provide uh, users more flexibility. For example, I'm just going to give one simple example. Uh, if you select Calamares, the, Calamar the easy method, Calamares, it's going to have what you see on the live environment. It's going to have pipe wire. You're going to be stuck with whatever is on the live environment. Whereas with the, live, uh, with the Arch install-like script, it will ask you, do you want pulse or do you want pipe wire? Yeah. Do you want this or do you want that? It's going to give you more options. I would just go with the Arch install script just, for, for one, just because personally, I know I could make, I could feasibly make that pretty simply. So like, I mean, I, I'm not saying I would get it done super quickly, but I'm saying, I know, I know I could get it done and have it be really polished at the end. And that's the, at idea the same time, the advanced uh, installer, because that installer, I consider it more advanced because people should know what pipe wire is, what pulse is the differences between them. Uh, what uh, well, but what this so like versus like that option. You don't even have to call it an, an advanced install because like really, if you're going to provide like let's say you're going to provide an ISO that's just it's just regular Arch ISO, but Basically, it boots up yeah. with a with a you know script okay, already yeah. there, yeah, and script, it yeah, pre runs it script. when they log in or whatever, yeah. um, or like when it boots up. However you want to do it, but. <clears throat> If you're going to go that route, it doesn't even really need to be advanced because as a, a script, as you make the script, after it's done and it's functional, you can always go back over it and have it just dump out to the console an explanation of what things are right before they choose them. And because like I'm that's kind of the doing somewhat. I mean, that, that's one of the reasons why OpenBSD still doesn't have uh, a graphical installer because for one, if you go and install OpenBSD and you can't do it, um, there's something clinically wrong with you. It is so super, like so super simple. And half of it is just like, it's like, do you want this? And you're like, 
the default a answer it's like yeah that's the what reason, i want the reason and you just press the reason it. i'm asking is because the tty tends to scare people away I, that's why people look for arch based distros not arch okay install. there's I mean, there's two the there's ISO. two things to talk about first of all steve it depends on what your goals are for the for your distro. Are you aiming to be for new, brand new Arch users? If you are, both. then the it can be for both. It can well, be for both. See, if I include and and that leads installer. me into this. That leads me into the second thing is if you try to be for everyone, you end up being Debian, which has twelve thousand different ways of installing it. Okay, it has twelve thousand well, different ways. You know, that's what if, they try to do is if you is make yeah. everybody happy. Yeah, the actual. I'm pretty sure the actual saying is if you if you try to appeal to everyone, you appeal to no one. Yeah. Uh, yes. And like that's kind of that's that's kind of my point is like if you do, if if you want to make something like an an Arch install script, you can make it be so simple that anyone can use it, and that's probably the goal. Because I, I got to be honest, making an Arch install script is not difficult. The hardest part about what you want to do would be packaging Python. up the custom ISO. I, I need, no, I need to learn Python because it's in Python. You could do it in Bash. I mean, if you know Bash, you you, you could write it in Bash. There was there was a Arch install script that was written in Bash not too long ago before Arch mm -hmm. install was a thing. It was that I used it a yeah, couple times. Well, it was fine. Uh, the 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 idea the idea is because a lot of users come to Zero Linux because it looks good, and I'm thinking. Call it an advanced script because it's gonna. I know I can explain things like you said, Tyler, uh, in the uh, in the prompts, uh, but making the prompts too long will will lose uh, users' attention. Well, you. Uh, I mean, you don't have to dump the entire description of a program. Like but pipe wire if, and if, the if it's gonna be an, and if it's gonna pulse, be an, it requires that. If it's gonna be an advanced installer then you should assume people have advanced knowledge of what they're doing so you shouldn't have to exactly. explain everything so less less text to be written in the uh, like text the, 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 ex, the expert install of debian just assumes you know things it does it has a little blurb but it doesn't give that's you what i'm with. thinking about a little blurb here you, and there you could do it i mean I, if, you, if you learn some end curses you could put you know you could do an end curses type thing if you wanted to do that that that's a yeah. little less Frightening than TTY. Uh, and curses is bash in the end, right? Well, it can, I think no. curses is just the front end. It can be coded in pretty much anything. Yeah, anything. Yeah. Uh, oh. Well, uh, uh, this is. Thank you for uh, answering, but uh, I'm 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 conflicted right now because a lot of people on your server, Matt, uh, uh, kept telling me you can turn it into a script. But what they uh, I'm now that I think about it, while talking about it, is what they meant was. As maybe this is what they meant: a script that can convert a, a ready, a, 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 a de already deployed system, convert it to zero Linux in a way. I'm pretty sure that that's, that's, that's what I, they they meant. Because if you think about it, I got to remember: I don't develop a distro for anything. Like I don't know, I I wouldn't even have a clue to do what you do. But if you wanted to take your all of your looks and feels and stuff like that, you could do that inside a script. And then all of your repositories and stuff, like you, you host your own repository, that'd be easy to add to like pacman.com or whatever via script, yeah. you know? So yeah. that that would add your repositories, you know, and, and then just installing the programs that you have on, you know, that are extra to whatever's installed. And it'd just be a series of if statements to find out what's installed and what's not, you know? That's what I used. So. so that's why I created the rice that anyone uh, uh, because the whole argument came from the rice that I shared on your server in the uh, Unix porn uh, uh, the, with an easy to uh, easy to run install script that will convert any uh, arch based uh, distro to zero Linux. Basically, the look only I I'm using that as uh, MD said, uh, very S tier marketing. Uh, <laughs> for zero Linux. Well, people really, marketing for I mean, zero Linux. your distro has gotten attention in like ZDNet and 
I saw it on it's. Oh, uh, we reached uh, we reached on the distro watch. We reached sixty nine noise. <laughs> uh, position 69 and then now we're position 63 in two days we climb from 69 to 63 in two days man you you, you got to do the mx linux and build yourself a bot you'll get to number one in no time <laughs> <laughs> no but the 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 your your community i want to applaud your community on your discord because they had a lot of re- valued uh, arguments but it's it was my attempt at marketing zero Linux, telling the people, okay, you can apply this rice on any Arch based distro, but that's a small taste of what zero Linux is. You want the full experience? <laughs> Install zero Linux, basically. My Discord is awesome. All right, so for me personally, all I've basically been doing this week on Linux is working my ass off. <laughs> I have been just doing work all week long. I haven't been doing very much recording, I, although I did record an ultimate guide to qtile that video three, is uh, one hour long right no it's three hours long dude three hours. <laughs> all right three, that's no that's before editing uh it's gonna the, the funny thing is how is much that, are you going to condense it down to well i'm i'm aiming for an hour it's not going to get there I, I guarantee it'll be at least an hour and a half because i there there's after I was done, I realized that there was still a couple sections that I didn't cover, and I need to do that if I'm going to call it an ultimate guide. So I need to do the rules and the auto start. One stuff. hour forty minutes. Make it into a, a, a theater, a theatrical film oh. length. No, see, I, I don't. I had uh, I did a polybar one that was just under an hour. That's my longest regular video ever. Um, I don't mind making it long. I, mean, I I'm going to do a poll poll and see if people would prefer me to split it up. But I honestly don't. It, I mean, you, no, I, don't don't. I would be against splitting it up because it's it's going to be uh, it's going to become very disjointed. Yeah, kind of like DT's uh, Emacs thing that he's doing right now. It's kind of all over the place. Um, I yeah. don't know. Um, I, I'll probably keep it all all as one, but it, it's going to take forever to uh, to edit. <laughs> it's going to take forever to edit. But it, now you I, know I, why I, I left YouTube. I went line by line through a, a, a Qtile configuration file, um, and it was fun. But it was three hours long. Um, it's it's your it's what you like doing. It was fun. Leave it. Don't don't mess it up. Like it was uh, it was fun. I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you a tidbit from a guy who who is leaving uh, YouTube. Uh, but I come from a big family of media people in the media world, movies and. TV shows and stuff like that. So um, when you start editing too much a video, too much, it loses its. I know people have a, a attention span of a beetle uh, these days, but you ha- you will have those people who who get really interested with uh, what you in what you are doing. But if you edit too much, especially this trend, um, I'm starting to hate this trend of just cut, 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 a lot of cuts in the video. Sorry, I wasn't cucking like a cock. I was just saying cut, 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 cut. So it's like like Brody, for example. He he does a lot of cuts. It makes me feel like seasick. He's like, his hand is here. And then suddenly his hand is scratching over here because he did the long cut. Uh, yeah, so, I, I do that. Uh, some. I, I have a lot of cuts in my yeah. video too. But I, I also have a lot Your of Your videos are tolerable because you don't do it so much. Well, I have and a lot this of one hour words. video, if you cut it too much, it's going to make people seasick. I I don't know about you, it's Matt, not gonna but feel I, natural I cut anymore. an awful lot of ums out of oh, my dude. shit. All right, so here's the thing is, like, I oh. trained myself. So I, I, I when I first started, I was very bad on the ums, right? And that was when I was not doing any editing, editing at all. So I looked online and I took a little course on how to filter yourself out with ums. And it's basically the idea is that you just got to train yourself to be quiet. Like it's where, where you're trying to, when you're thinking you're going to say the word um, you're going to have a you just, lot of dead time at this just point. Just say no, just have no sound whatsoever. That's your filler word. And it's because it's easier to cut a blank space than it is a word, right? So I trained yeah. myself and I did, I'd done a really good job for the most part. I still say it every once in a while, but it's not nearly as bad. The, my stupid ass has come up with other filler words. So I've started, I use the word right all the time. Like, like, like I'm, I'm talking to somebody, like, you know, I'm doing this right. <laughs> like I said, that mm-hmm. and then for a while I was doing going through, I was like, I'm going to be going through this. I'm going to go through that. I'm going to going through this. 
I come up with new filler words all the time, so it takes <laughs> it it takes quite a bit yeah, of yeah. This is, this gets annoying, but what I'm saying is, uh, for something like rising, like what you're doing, heck, I, I'm 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 feeling like telling you put the three hour thing up because it, but if it has a lot of errors oh no it's it's ums, it's getting lot, it's getting edited because <laughs> there, there was a lot of parts it needs where to I had to get go back edited, to it. but what i'm saying is leave it as natural as if one hour 40 minutes is the only way you can keep it natural feeling uh but don't do a lot of cuts where one minute one second your hand is here the other one is over there uh, your, your face is looking that way well, the, and then the my face minute. isn't on it hardly at all because it's mostly just a terminal i'll be doing quite a bit of cuts because a lot of times i i say the words and then oh, I if type you're not it, in the image then okay then, if you're not in the then image, i type saying, it you know you so. are image. all right that's why i recommend people who do a lot of cuts to, to show themselves in a very small frame early on at uh, tlt the the linux tube he used to put himself uh, in a very tiny, like uh, three pixels by three pixels. <laughs> we used to barely see him. <laughs> but uh, well, just put yourself I mean, like, uh, in the corner. That, no matter how many cuts you do, it's not going to show. Tyler? I mean, that's why in videos you should normally just keep your keep your arms down because that way when you're editing you can do as many cuts as you want and as yeah. long as you're not okay so like you don't have one monitor that's, the way funniest, up here, that's why fine. that's why i'm gonna tell brody about about his editing because uh, <laughs> uh, i really feel sick like i was <laughs> I've i was in bed <laughs> the, the phone in my face watching his video he did so many cuts one after the other and within i don't know the span of 30 seconds i was like oh my god i feel seasick <laughs> So, oh, like no. Whatever There's reason, when amount. I'm recording, my nose itches all the time, like constantly. So I'm always had. So I, sometimes when I cut, my arms will be down here, and then every once in a while, you guys will probably see me. All of a sudden, my nose is starting to itch because I have to go itch my nose. Pro sometimes I cut it in such a way that it looks like I'm actually picking my nose, which is <laughs> absolutely hilarious. <laughs> absolutely funny. Uh, all right, guys, we've been going for 40 minutes. We have to jump into the news. We haven't even started yet. Um, yeah, and the news are not very interesting this week. Hey, I, there's a couple good ones. Um, I don't know about you. On my one. side? <laughs> you got you no. got to find some non KDE news there, Steve. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm the K I'm the resident KDE guy. I have to stick to KDE. Yeah. Like Josh is the resident Gentoo guy. We, we should we should always just put Steve's at the end and, and steal late night Linux's thing. KDE corner. We just completely steal it. Uh, anyways, let's go Ooh, ahead. You watch that too? You listen to that too? Yeah, I'm, I'm I actually pay for uh, Patreon for them. It's one of my favorite podcasts. Oh, nice. Um, nice. They're very interesting. Yeah, good guys. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. Tyler, why don't you tell us your first link of the week, please? Oh, oh, I get to go first. I wasn't expecting this. Okay, so I guess we're going to start off with the like the super boring news that no one will care about. So like there is two severe Linux vulnerabilities that impact 40% of Ubuntu users. Look, very minor news. No biggie. Uh, so uh, there's two different CVEs. Um, those who uh, want you know, accuracy out of this news section will enjoy this. CVE-2023-2640 and CVE-2023-32629. Uh, Both were uh, some pretty some pretty bad. Like one was local privilege escalation, which is sick. Um, and the other one was an unprivileged user may set privileged extended attributes on the mount files, leading them to set an upper file uh, to set on the upper files without appropriate security checks. Sick. So uh, if you scroll down to the bottom, there is like a list, though, uh, as long as you update to a newer kernel, you're fine. Uh, if you're running 15 uh, or 5.15, uh, then this 100 percent affects you. And so that means if you're running a 20.04 LTS build of Ubuntu and uh, you're on the latest and greatest kernel, which there it is, 5.15, you're susceptible to this. So you should probably update your Ubuntu server uh, if you can. Uh, and if you can't, um, yeah, some, some nice yummy CVEs that affect you. Yummy, yummy. And uh, by the way, before we move on at all, I just do want to go ahead and say, Josh, I do miss you so much, dude. <laughs> we all miss you, so Josh. Uh, so my question about this is, 14, isn't like 1404 still in like 
paid long-term support or something like that. Like, you, if you still have 14.04 installed, you can pay Ubuntu to still support that thing. Maybe it was 16.04. Uh, there's one like that's really, really old. That you, I wonder if they're still, like, like porting old kernels. Cause no, one of them's, I think it's 18.04. Is 18.04 oh, the, the, the oldest one? I don't yeah, use I Ubuntu at all, so I don't, I don't know. All I know is they have, like, a really old LTS that they can still... I wonder if they're porting... It's like, you, you just reminded me of Windows 7 and paid support... <laughs> Well, I'm, Canonical, I mean, like, look, Canonical does that stuff. So, if you're running like 14.04, I'm pretty sure that's not too far off from the build that Hannah Montana Linux is based off of. <laughs> so, like, yeah, okay, <laughs> just saying. Uh, for those of you who are IT admins, is if you're running Hannah Montana Linux as a server distro, <laughs> I want to know about it because I'm going to interview you. I want to know why. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fun. <laughs> That'd be great. I used to watch Hannah Montana uh, uh, when I was younger. It was kind of weird. I don't think I ever saw thing. a single episode, but you guys got to remember by the time that she was on, I was in my mid 20s, so it would have been a little weird. Um, also, yeah, same well, here. I was in You're my older late than I am. 20s, what are you doing, so... Steve? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in my. I was in my late twenties, but I was watching it with my sister. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, I don't have. I don't have younger siblings, so um, I can't use that as an excuse. Billy to Rick Cyrus <laughs> and, get, and them are like local out here. And she, she got on your achy breaky heart, did she, Tyler? <laughs> oh no, no, no! My sister, my sister loved the show, but like we like, like I've seen Miley Cyrus like twice. First time, absolute douche, absolute, but. Uh, I'm sure she's changed quite a bit. Uh, well, she now has the voice to scare to, to scare men out of their clothes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, so like Matt, like, do you have a piece of news, or are we moving on to Steve? <laughs> let's go ahead and do one of mine. I I don't even know. All right, so let's talk about GNOME because I want to talk about GNOME. So this is, so GNOME had a conference this past week. Let me scroll back up here to the top. Yeah, the, at, at Guadec, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, 2023. I don't have no clue what that's actually it's actually uh, stands for. But the they had a develop, developer there that talked about the perils of having more than a couple windows open in GNOME, and they're positing or they're proposing to change the way ma window management works on GNOME for a future release. And basically, tiling. Uh, yeah, it's they're adding tiling. They're kind of adding adding tiling. Also, they're making it so that windows don't overlap from the, w the way these videos look. So I'm like, I'm playing one right now, and it looks like they're creating it so that you, c yes, there's tiling when you want to have things full screen or side by side, but when you're having just- They're doing the Apple one, but better. I wouldn't say, I don't know about better. I'd have to wait to try it, but it, it looks- From the animation, I saw that it's exactly like the Apple one, just well, it, better. They but took some things from the Apple one for sure. When it's just one application that's full screen, it goes into like its own workspace. From what the the, the thing, but yes, the not only that, when when the, when you maximize one application, it's going to ask you which other application you want to maximize next to it. Yeah, just like Apple does. Yeah, Apple stole that from Windows, um, actually, which is hilarious. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, no one knows that because no one uses that shit on Windows. Well, my mom does, but only <laughs> accidentally because her tra her trackpad is broken. Oh. It, it keeps re registering a gesture when there's not actually a gesture being used. <laughs> so um, it's disconnected. Um. So yeah, it, it's a it's gonna it's it looks weird because it's it's definitely not full on Apple because they got this weird mosaic type layout where Windows don't overlap with each other they're just there and then when you it's want to called make... mosaic actually it's called mosaic i know that's why i called it that um oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyways they have this thing it just looks weird I'm, I'm playing the videos here now on 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 the screen and it looks like a mixture between like a, a kd tiling script and something else i don't know it, there's no real firm ideas on when this is going to come out um but they're I, trying it as an extension first they're going to release it as an extention okay. first oh so people can test makes, it. It makes sense. So, yeah, uh, so they can uh, get the lay of the land, as they say, uh, how people are going to react to this thing. And according to the reaction of the users, this is the proper way of doing things, by the way, uh, unlike KDE. Uh, <laughs> He's sorry, not better, KDE, He's not as much at as all. I love you and I use you and will forever 
I will have your children, KDE, but now, for now, <laughs> let's put the children on the side because you're still not worthy. But anyway, uh, for uh, GNOME, the pro they're doing it very the proper way. They're making an extension that has these features and everything, so the users test it, and according to the uh, to the reaction, they either will implement it or they won't. Uh, or by default, sorry, they will implement either yeah. implement it by default or uh, uh, keep it as an option optional feature. I'm just I'm just glad to see GNOME finally having this this like I, I know obviously these videos are taken inside of like a kind of ideal environment but yeah. they finally have good animations that was the only like the only problem with gnome was like it had good animations but they would never render properly like ever yeah. unless yeah. like i mean missing maybe frames. if you had like a thread the missing river. i call it the missing <laughs> frames animation especially in the settings where they had those animations you had yeah the animation going and then it would skip a beat like a few frames and then it will continue and then it will loop i'm like what the hell but oh, yeah. so, Matt, uh, does, has this refreshed your or spiced up your affair no. with GNOME? Um, I will still Nothing will. not use GNOME. Nothing. Listen, um, I, I, I have accepted the fact that GNOME to Sir Matt Salot here uh, uh, will never love GNOME just the way that I will never love Windowman. Yeah, that's not true. Matt's having a secret affair. We all know it. This is this <laughs> is just bull, this is bull, on. and I just want to register it right now that no, I the the, the hilarious. Th okay, so <laughs> I, I did actually use GNOME one time this week. I I did in that VM for that Qtile video. I used the GNOME version of um, Endeavor OS in order to do it. So that's that was my one, and I was so confused because I hadn't used GNOME in quite a while, and. I w kept forgetting that. So in Firefox, you guys know that it, it, there's this little like down carrot look thing that if you hit it, it will show you all your open tabs, right? In, in Firefox, I kept hitting that thing, expecting the fucking window to minimize. <laughs> you know, but there's oh oh I know there's no minimizing. I know that GNOME. feeling, Matt. <laughs> like, yeah. Why is there no minimizing Think. GNOME? Why? <laughs> <laughs> like it doesn't make any sense Six. please give me my minimize no. back it just uh, why do I, uh, <clears throat> but you do use gnome from time to time when you make videos about it every once in a while but just for variety yeah. but i have no yeah. secret me, love me and not it. even for videos i will not touch wms <laughs> <laughs> i would just cut off my hand before i can make uh WM. You just got to know how to use them, Steve. I'm just saying, man. <laughs> you got you to gotta learn. I'm not a keyboard-centric guy. I, I If I can use a computer completely just with the mouse, I would be the happiest man alive. Well, you technically can just get an on-screen keyboard. Win-win. Without right. having the need for an on-screen keyboard. Well, you fine. Voice to text. <laughs> well, that I can do. I did it with Siri. At No. Uh, when we first, I used to work for uh, retail, Apple Retail. Uh, so when we uh, demoed Siri to users, when they first uh, started introducing Siri scripts, short Siri shortcuts, sorry, Siri shortcuts, uh, there was a shortcut created by a user where you can turn, uh, make Siri do things on your phone with just your voice without going into accessibility and all that jazz. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I can do that because I did it for three years demoing Siri to customers <laughs> and yeah. Siri shortcuts that I can live with that. When, when it do comes... we have such a thing on uh, on Linux? <laughs> yeah, there's there's voice there's voice to text stuff. T check out a not voice to text, but voice to commands like minimize, maximize. Yeah, check out a, a YouTuber website. called uh, Bugs Writer. I think is his name. He does a whole bunch of videos about how he 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 created his own virtual assistant with uh, with with open source. I think he's software. on TLT server. I think he's on TLT server. Could be. I don't know. Um, Makulu Linux, I think uh, his distribution is, uh, there's one guy who uh, made Makulu Linux, Maku, whatever it's called, uh, he, he has created his own uh, virtual assistant uh, that works either in terminal or on the desktop, uh, and it, it, since it's uh, his own creation, it's laggy, 
it takes like 30, 15 to 30 seconds to reply, but it's getting there. It's all his <laughs> creation. So uh, I might get into that. Uh, anyways, just regarding GNOME, guys, no, I'm not having a secret affair with GNOME. I still don't like it. And uh, There's only one guy having a secret affair with GNOME, and it's just me. Yeah. All right. Uh, Steve, Sorry, uh, your KDE. first one. Sorry, KDE. I'm cheating on you for a while. Speaking of KDE, why don't you tell us your first one, would you please? <laughs> My first one. Well, the most boring one ever. Uh, more updates. More updates to Plasma 6 and more updates to Plasma 6. And one of those updates being now in settings, you will have something called voice uh, sound profile sound profiles i'm like hello windows hello mac os what the hell kd are kde doing this is to me i must admit it right here and then if you continue kde if you continue adding useless features like that i'm considering a divorce i'm really considering a divorce because sound profiles like i want my uh, my system to annoy me more right I want the system to ding, 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 wobble. Wait, ah! didn't you talk about this two weeks ago? No, this is uh, before it was the introduction of the idea. Now we have an actual image uh, on the Foronix for some reason. We don't have one, uh, but I saw the image on uh, online somewhere, uh, maybe on Twitter. But anyway, or X as it's called now. Uh the porn site, Twitter. <laughs> but anyway, uh, there was an image uh, showing the actual uh, settings thing with the icon in settings saying uh, that says uh, sound profiles. And then they're rectangles and they have a drop down where it shows you what sounds it will play in this profile. And you can, uh, you can ch test each and every sound that it will make. And you can download more from online and the plasma store will start being flooded with more sound annoying sound profiles so i'm like way to make plasma i'm going to say again like i said it last week way to make plasma more annoying oh i know it can be turned off it's not something you're first forced with but why introduce that annoying feature in the first place this is nothing nothing anybody was requesting so this is nothing that's gonna make kde any better it's just going to add another annoying thing that, that I have to turn off. Let me ask you guys a question. Do you guys think that Plasma 6 is shaping up to be the most boring release of Plasma ever? It, it, I'm starting to have that feeling, yes. Like, like, it feels like the only reason why they're moving it like a whole version number is because QT went to 6. It, yes, it, I'm having that feeling just as well. Fe I mean... Gr Granted, maybe it's because we're we're getting these updates like piecemeal, like we're just hearing like the but the sound profiles and the no no but random little pieces, and the, we don't, we're not getting a whole the, pi a there's, picture. There's a lot of fixes. Uh, there's a lot of fixes coming. They're not talking about the nitty gritty about what's going on behind closed doors. They're just uh, releasing them uh, like well, nobody's gonna release the tech blog that Nate writes. <laughs> nobody's gonna understand that. Uh, it's just uh, something developers will understand, but not the uh, average Joe. But anyway, uh, they're doing a lot of under the hood, and they never touted Plasma Six to be something uh, Re gigantic, revolutionary. Or they always or... talked uh, talked about it being very subtle change. It's more under the hood work than it is features. But the way they're talking about uh, the news outlets are talking about uh, and concentrating about this sound thing uh, it's 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 getting under my skin like I i'm starting to see those bits and pieces shape up in the very few features they're going to include in plasma 6 so far those very few features they're including in plasma 6 they're useless they don't need to exist please get out get out of my life but since i'm a distro maintainer here's the good thing since I'm a distro maintainer, I will know which package, if it's a package for the sound profiles, if it's a package, I'm not going to be including it on zero only. Simple as that. Okay. If it's not a package and we're forced with it, I'm going to start talking uh, divorce lawyers, divorce lawyers, I will go no. 
Steve's going to be a Gnome so fan. Steve's going to be if, the Gnome fanboy. If fan KDE continues to, to shove the useless features like that down our throats, yeah, please. XFC is where it goes. Because Gnome just saying, just saying. is Marlon... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll I'll tell you one thing. Gnome is Marlon Monroe, who doesn't want to have an affair with Marlon Monroe, uh, and uh, KDE is uh, Madonna. Okay. So there you go. So uh, if KDE, have if you Madonna ha keeps, hold on a second. Have you seen Madonna lately? I'm just. <laughs> She's still beautiful. <laughs> Maybe I sh I'm too judgy. She's still beautiful, uh, but she has too many features. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, and she did date. She was like married to Dennis Rodman for like half a minute. So I mean, I'm yeah, not all but, that uh, she's got a lot of features. Whereas <laughs> Marty Moreau doesn't have a lot of features. Yes, she functions. Also, has been dead for like fifty years. Um, <laughs> I'm talking about you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> if she were alive, she would I, 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 in I, her I, in her beauty. <laughs> she's gnome because she functions. She's beautiful. Not many features, not many headaches. Whereas Steve, Madonna, too many features. You need to get out beautiful. more, bud. I'm just saying, <laughs> yes, you need some better co pop culture reference than those two. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> well, I'm 43 years old. That's the only pop cultures I have. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, let's go ahead and move on to the contact information. If you want to get in contact with us, you can do so in any number of ways. Probably the best way is to head on over to the website, which is linuxcast.org. There you'll find previous episodes all the way back to season one. Uh, you can binge those. And I'm still working on uh, hosting the podcast myself, so uh, some of those links are, are, are going to be changing here very, very soon. But it, you really shouldn't notice much of a difference uh, as we go along. So uh, head on over there. Check out check out all that you'll find blog posts there as well you can find tyler he has a youtube channel which i actually you had a, like a stream like two weeks ago so he does know how to use his youtube channel so i'm assuming eventually maybe he'll find that password once again to use his youtube channel youtube.com slash zany og is where he'll find him uh Steve does not have or he has a youtube channel but he's not do, using it anymore uh, he, he wants you to follow him at you want to follow him at on fast Good lord, man. Fostodon.org slash zero Linux. Yeah? Was that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So follow yes, him on, on on Mastodon. That's the reason why I was kind of mixing Fostodon and Mastodon together. And those words, despite having a similar structure, don't really go, go together when they try to come out your mouth at the same time. Uh, anyways, you can follow uh, the me on Mastodon and Odyssey and all those stuff. Those links will be in the video description or in the podcast description if you want to head on over there. Uh, YouTube.com slash LinuxCast. We record this live every Saturday around 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. So if you want to join, join us live, you can do so. Uh, and uh, it, you can also join... Uh, Tyler and I both have Matrix servers now, so mine's been up for longer than Tyler's. I'm just, I just want to point that out. Uh, I win. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you beat him to it. You beat him to it, my friend. The, the, you beat Tyler at something. There, there are at least five people there that that are very active. So head on over there. Those links will be in the video description as well, I believe. And if you don't want to head on over there, you can find all that stuff on the website at YouTube at the uh, LinuxCast.org/contact. I think that's all I needed to say. Um, yeah, not the greatest contact information section that I've ever had, but what do you expect? They're never. It's ready always to. fun. I uh, sometimes I wait for it because that's the best. Uh, one of the good parts of the uh, podcast. <laughs> that's the that's the good. If that's the good part, <laughs> good. I was the okay. best part is when I appear on the episode with uh, and act like a like a, like a drunk woman on acid, or when Tyler's high. Yeah. Yo, if if you can imperson, impersonate a drunk woman on acid perfectly next time, dude, go for it. <laughs> but it's it's mainly just going to be a lot of sitting in your chair, sweating and looking around. <laughs> They're having a Madonna <laughs> conversation in the, the, the chat room. We've officially lost the plot, guys, and jumped the shark. <laughs> That's great. <clears throat> Anyways, I don't think the Matrix links actually work in YouTube chat, Tyler. Um, 
Uh, they they don't, but just so it, everyone knows, you can just highlight the full link and then, and then copy it and paste it into another. All you have to do is paste that link in a browser and it'll redirect that, you to if you have Element that's installed. That's another thing. Or Why don't they make uh, clickable links for Matrix channel? Well, they do, just uh, well, not in I the think, YouTube chats. <laughs> yeah, because the URLs are so weird that YouTube, like, doesn't understand it. Yeah, it <laughs> there's, there's YouTube be dumb. In it, in it. YouTube be dumb. It works fine on Discord. Yes. All right. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on. We have three more links to go. So Tyler, why don't you tell us of your second one, please? Oh, oh I'm excited. Okay. So <laughs> Intel has uh, done something pretty interesting. So uh, they dropped a driver that has a workaround to speed up. Uh, the Cyberpunk 2077 shader compilation. So uh, this is very on Intel card article. to me. Y yeah, well, y yeah, yeah. It, it it is an Intel driver. So this is yeah. this is uh, as so far as I know. For the, it's not beneficial for the majority of the people. Well, I mean, people like. Uh, I mean, there is plenty of people Josh, out there like with Josh. With the arc. <laughs> Josh, yeah. yeah. And there's also plenty of people who do have uh, beefier, like, uh, Intel CPUs with iGPUs. And uh, a lot of people are okay. saving up for their GPUs. So in the meantime, uh, this, this one driver takes the shader compilation from 88 seconds to 33. So... Uh, I don't know which line of code they changed, but it's a big improvement, and it is part of the Mesa uh, development branch. So you can go pick that Mesa, up. Mesa Mesa twenty uh, twenty three dot twenty three dot three. Yeah. Um, you guys actually uh, now that we don't have Josh on here to be biased. Um, do you guys think that the Intel the Intel dedicated graphics things is actually going to be a thing? Uh, yes. For a long period of time, you yes. think so? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. See, I'm still uh, not good. I, I think... Not good, but just gonna be in part of the GPU. Well, lineup. well, hold on, hold on. If you mean, are they gonna keep making graphics cards? Yes, I think they're definitely gonna keep making graphics cards. Are they gonna be pretty decent? And are the drivers gonna keep getting better? Yes. Do I think they're going to actually compete with no with Nvidia? No, heck uh, no. <laughs> but but it does scare me though because with how fastly their drivers are massively improving the performance of their current cards, if they can like take what they've learned from driver development and exponentially improve on it as they produce newer cards. In two generations, they could easily rival AMD. And, I mean... Well, yeah, when it comes to Linux, especially. Well, well, for B because, both, because, I mean... Because, yeah, because uh, now we will have two open-source drivers. And, and not even that. Like, even on Windows, most people who are on Windows and game will go with an AMD card because they don't want a lot of the features that NVIDIA sells. And AMD is also typically a little bit cheaper. And Intel is attacking AMD's price point. So, you know... Listen, like, listen. Yeah. Uh, you are right when you say, when you say it's going to compete with AMD. But to me, I'm not seeing it from the Windows perspective because I left Windows, I divorced Windows a long time ago. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at it from the Linux user's perspective because in the Linux... Uh, realm we need open source drivers we need hardware that supports linux better and with in intel growing at uh, exponentially at the rate it's growing at we're gonna have like in the pc space we have nvidia amd intel uh, but uh, when it comes to linux it's intel amd nvidia can shit its bed i don't care because it's it's, it's a nightmare on linux especially when it comes to Wayland, <clears throat> please. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, so we're going to have two major players in Linux in the hardware GPU realm. It's going to be Intel AMD. In the PC space, it's going to be three. 
Intel, AMD, and uh, NVIDIA. But in the Linux space, it's going to be primarily AMD, Intel, head to head. Especially at the pricing, at the pricing that Intel is at. If Intel continues to grow while keeping their pricing at the uh, at, uh, at at the, the way it is right now, I think Intel might re, uh, surpass uh, in uh, in sales because of the price, AMD even price to performance ratio is Intel is going to win in the Linux realm. I guess we'll see. That's um, how I see it. I probably will still never buy an Intel card. I'm no, just, neither would I. Just gonna put that out there. I'm not gonna even buy an AMT card well, because I, yeah, but... I, I, I recently realized like, why put money on something? Uh, it's just my opinion. I'm not saying this is the reality. It's just my opinion. Why put money on something I'm just going to enjoy? Uh, I, I, I don't really need basically. Okay, Wayland will not run on NVIDIA, but am I missing anything without Wayland uh, on X11? It's going to die at some point, but maybe in 5, 10 years, by that point, I would have have to upgrade my PC anyway. Well, wait, but hold on, hold on. Like, really, it comes down to this simple fact. If anyone goes out and spends like $300 on a new graphics card or, you know, any piece of hardware like that is good. for... For one specific thing, like a like a program or like a window yeah, manager or like whatever, like yeah, no. Now, what I recommend, and this is what I've told everyone, like, look, if you're interested in Wayland, Hyperland, anything like that, and you have an NVIDIA card, just wait until it's time to upgrade your card. Exactly. And as soon as you do, just get an AMD. Thank card. you, Tyler. Like, Tyler, I can uh, I can jump through this. If I could jump through the screen and hug you for what you just said, I would. <laughs> Well, yeah, Very it's a sensible words. thing to do. This creepy. is what I've been trying to say. No, I'm sorry. That's just too creepy. <laughs> 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 All right. Let's, uh, let's move on. So everyone's favorite init system has a fantastic update coming. Uh, system D version 254. It has a couple yes. pretty awesome features that I don't really understand, but they sound cool, so I thought I'd talk about them. Uh, so the the biggest one is that they have an, a soft reboot mechanism, and the way Pharonix... Ex- it's it's basically a uh, fast restart, that uh, fast shutdown and fast restart of Windows. Okay. Um, I'm going to just read what... Pharonix says, it's a mechanism has been added to the systemd service manager. A soft reboot is similar to a regular boot reboot, but that it affects user space only. Initiating a systemd soft reboot will shut down any running services in any other in other units and then optionally switch to any new root file system and then bring back up all the user space services without rebooting the kernel. So uh, very easily uh, very easily compared to uh, respringing uh, when it when it comes to people who understand jailbreaking on iOS, yep. this is yep. exactly, exactly that. It and it, it was, yeah. and since uh, 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 that tool was Linux Dude. Debian package, so it's respringing, uh, uh, it's it's restarting the user space. The hell is wrong res- with you, man? I haven't what? heard like I haven't even thought of respringing, and now it's killing me because like how is this feature being now added into System D when this been like oh that was an iPhone feature like that's an iPhone feature ago. not by Apple not by Apple careful not by Apple by uh, uh, it's integrated in iOS yes but the, the 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 thing that took advantage of it a lot is when you applied themes from Cydia. When you jailbroke your phone, iPhone, I don't know if anybody remembers Cydia, mm-hmm. but uh, and now my friend is gonna ping me and he's gonna yell at me. Uh, <laughs> but uh, if anybody remembers Cydia and Winterboard on jailbroken iPhone, yes, uh, where you up- yes. apply themes, I used to sell. Holy a, a shit! A I'm getting nostalgic. On, I, I used to sell a theme on Cydia. Uh, I sold maybe a hundred copies. Before. Was it? Was, pl- please hold on a second. Please, please tell me that it was called like Zero iPhone or something. <laughs> I Zero no, no, or no, something. No, 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 no. It's way before <laughs> Linux. Way before anything. Shame. It, it, it was called Bloodshot because it was called Bloodshot. <laughs> if you look it up on uh-huh. Google, you might see. Uh, you might see yeah. Bloodshot iOS theme that yeah. was created by me. Uh, it's just bullet holes in leather and blood. Yeah. I that saw it. That was. I me. didn't buy it, but I saw it. I wanted it. It looked good. <laughs> it was very good because it took me uh, three months to wor- uh, working on it. But anyway, 
uh, uh, respringing uh, uh, when uh, you apply a theme on IO jailbroken and iOS back in the day, or I don't know if you still have to, but you had to respring, so reload yeah. the user space on iOS without having to reboot the phone. And that was really beneficial when it came to tethered jailbreaks, because when you, when you had a tethered jailbreak, not an untethered one, you had to re-jailbreak the phone every reboot. Yep. So to avoid that, they, they used the, uh, the feature that Apple integrated in their iOS but never used it. <laughs> so they resprung. So basically that feature, that exact feature, is coming to Linux in System D. 254. Like I said, it sounds... When I read that article, I was like, what the hell? It, you're copying I, jailbroken iOS? Okay. So, it does... <laughs> it, it, like I said, it sounds really, really cool because it would be... It, basically, it sounds like it's going to be used for when certain non-kernel levels uh, applications have been updated and need to be restarted, but you don't need to do a full reboot. Yeah. So, that sounds really cool. Or yeah. when certain non... certain things inside user space crash. So, um... Maybe perhaps like yep. K-Win. I'm looking at you, K-Win. I was going to say K-Win. <laughs> <laughs> like, like if, if K-Win crash, it could do a, a soft reboot instead of this, you know, a, a, you know, like instead of having to completely Hard X reboot. out into yeah. doing a, t a TTY and rebooting your system the whole way, it could do this instead. That sounds awesome. But this yeah. update also has a couple other things that are, are really interesting. So um, startup memory set settings are now supported. Then there was another one that the... Um, so like the the systemd kernel install has been re written in C, and then they also have institute have created a systemd battery check, which will check your battery on your laptop during initialization, and will warn you if the battery level is too low, and then shut it down properly before anything. I goes need wrong. that. So, I need that for uh, for for my for my thingy of the week when I come to it. So this is a big systemd um, update. Sounds really awesome. I can't wait for it. I can't. I can't wait for it because it will fix other things. If you, I read the uh, development. I went because I'm a distro maintainer. I go dig dig deeper into things like that. Uh, it's going to. Uh, uh, it's going to have a, another feature uh, where uh, <laughs> you can load more things in the TTY. So I did not have chat open while I was talking about that. <laughs> Thing. But I just knew when I went back to it, they'd be having a, a debate between System D and OpenRC and run it. I just knew that that oh, was yeah, happening. Of course, that debate <laughs> will never die. <laughs> I just knew it was happening. <laughs> By the way, guys, oh yeah, guaranteed the vast majority of people in the chat right now are using System D and not an alternative they, any system. They guaranteed. just want to join the exactly. discussion. They just when want they to should the be discussion. using OpenRC. <laughs> yeah. Uh, two out of three people on the podcast right now are using System D. I'm just saying. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I, you're not yeah. using the System the D version of Gen 2, are you, Tyler? Hell no, dude. I'm using OpenRC. I'm going to be using it for the next five years. Now, that's not because uh, I don't like System D, though, because uh, quite frankly, uh, I would have kind of liked to have made this a system d install in retrospect because there i didn't realize it but there was some kind of nice system d service scripts that like i had it i could have taken easy advantage of but now i gotta rewrite and open rc ones but it's not that big of a deal but you know it's one of those things i don't really give a shit like like, they both work good one of the reasons why mx linux has so many great tools is because they had to create tools to get around the fact that they don't use system d um, so that's the reason why MX Linux has so many great tools. So you're experiencing that. You're going to have to create your own tools because <laughs> you're not on <laughs> system D. All right, Steve, your last, uh, article, please. Was that a burp? No, but it could be. <laughs> okay. I'll burp here in a second. Give anyway, me, give me just one second. I'm muting. Okay. Anybody who can meme this, anybody, anybody, thank you. Oh, come on. <laughs> you asked for it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway. Any, can anyone create a uh, create a animated GIF out of what I'm about to do? You're not even do it sense. and meme uh, away, meme away. I want this to be uh, turned into an animated GIF and meme to hell. Okay, don't worry. All right, get ready. I'm prepared. You're prepared. All right, I'm getting ready too. Are you going to pee on your camera? Okay. Meme it. 
Okay, uh, with that worry. being said, uh, done. Uh, <laughs> the audio listeners are really confused right now. <laughs> I didn't want to scream because I don't want to blast out your have camera. People complaining your about ear, ble- yeah. ear bleed. <laughs> but another reason for a divorce with KDE. Oh no! KDE Plasma 6 will remove shit! That's what I called it. Now they're not only introducing uh, introducing that. I wanted to co- uh, combine those, uh, have those two in in the same episode because ah, this is a perfect day to talk about KDE uh, and how I'm soon going to be divorcing it. But uh, they're not only introducing silly, not shitty, just silly features to to be uh, mature <laughs> about it, just silly shit. Now they want to remove shit. I understand some of them. Okay, the the windowed widgets, uh, K runner. Uh, the windowed widgets, K, K, K runner is uh, uh, is being dropped. I understand that. Not very useful. Uh, the Wayland Force font DPI in a glo- uh, and global icon size settings are being removed to reduce confusion. Uh, simply, how screen UI scaling should. Be, be carried out. I understand that as well. But a number of low quality task switchers are being removed. Some of them I like. Why remove them? Uh, if they keep them on the KDE store, then I would understand. The Air Plasma style, who nobody used, <laughs> will disappear. Good riddance. The pre activity power, uh, uh, the per activity power settings were useful. Very useful for a lot of my friends with laptops. Uh, okay. The system settings. I uh, what? Yes, Matt. I, uh, my question is, how many people actually use activities in KDE? Like, I know I do, but then I like tabs, and that's basically like a tab there's for your a, Apparently, there's a lot of users who who who, who really kind of like uh, activities because they can separate their porn life from their <laughs> gaming life. <laughs> I don't know, but they like it. I don't know the reasons. I just came up with those two reasons just uh, to joke around. But who knows? People like what they like. We cannot uh, come up with reasons why. We can just say weird. Um, but the system settings icon view is being removed in favor of sidebar view. Oh, that's gonna so piss. O- wanna keep that's this- gonna piss open Suza off because they use the icon view why? by default. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which I hate. <laughs> so, they can remove that. No problem. <laughs> it's just, it's just, the, old, I hate it's just it. the old style. It's just what, what it, way it used to look. Yeah. There's another one that confused the hell out of me. Icons in plasma styles are being removed. What do they mean by that? I can... Like, from what, the way uh, the Uh-oh. Linux experiment, Nick, from the Linux experiment, explained it in his uh, news video, was like... They're getting rid of, uh, so you can only apply icons that come with the theme now that you install. You can no longer apply icons separately. Are we sure that that's not the other way around? Because pl- I'm, I'm, plas- I'm plasma can... styles are the overall everything, right? That's the, that, that's the... Pl- no, that's the that's, that's global. the that's uh, global, global theme. theme. Okay. It's called global global theme. Okay, dear KDE, stop making Appearance, your theming so global theme. confusing. So in plasma style, plasma style. Oh, so I went to plasma style, and you have the. It just shows you the the, the plasma style. It just shows you air, uh, air uh, breeze, oxygen, lay-in, scratchy. So what what do they mean exactly, the icons? Oh, maybe they mean the icons in the uh, rectangle, in the preview. In the rectangular preview, there's icons on the left. What a weird thing to remove. That's a weird thing to remove, yeah. If that's the thing that they remove. Unless they're going to remove icons the way Nick explained it. It's confusing. We'll have to wait to see because if they remove separate... Uh, the ability to apply icons separately, I'm going to really quit Plasma. Uh, and the last thing they removed was the Unsplash 
picture of the day because Unsplash have new uh, uh, terms of service and it no longer agrees with KDE. So, yeah, that's another feature I can live without because I never used it. I use uh, I use uh, Wallpaper Engine because uh, I bought it. It, it is like weird 20, 20 that they're ago. removing things because normally they do not remove things; they just add things. So it's, it is weird. We're gonna, yeah, we're, this is something new from Plasma yeah. <laughs> for me, uh, but it's not a reason for divorce so far because the things they're removing are okay. They're removing, but come on, people. <laughs> You add silly stuff, you remove stuff. Who are you? Are you KDE? Are you still the KDE I fell in love with and married? Into? Steve's having an existential crisis. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the thingies of the week. We have to move on because we're running close to time. So the thingies of the week is the last episode or the last section of the podcast, as usual. We could have called this anything we wanted to, but all the good names were trademarked. So thingies of the week is what we settle on. So Tyler, your thingy of the week. Oh, my thingy of the week is Element. Uh, if you're not sure uh, what element is or what matrix is, what we've been talking, like uh, it's been mentioned throughout the podcast, uh, element is a uh, client for the matrix network, which is a decentralized, like secure uh, communication. Oh, sorry. Uh, Hold on a second. When you, fi- when you find your, find your dad's only fans. <laughs> Yes, you're, you're welcome. I, I, I'm showing it in element, I made that by the so way. Quick. <laughs> uh, Steve has no clue what we're talking about. <laughs> He's going to find I out. I made a meme. <laughs> <laughs> when you said snap it, make a meme, I was like, dude, got you. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, we're, we're sharing that all over the place. That thing is going to be that's going viral. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so good uh, i made it so quick uh but yeah so it's essentially just like discord uh it's it's a lot cleaner um and obviously it it, it is more secure it's open source um and yeah it's a it's an open source alternative to discord um you're not going to see as many people there but um i'm pushing my server uh like i'm going to be quitting discord in six months or uh, not not necessarily six months but at the end of the year um i'm going to be closing it down so yeah uh i i seem seem pretty happy uh with it let's see if it's gonna last uh, before you decide to close discord let's see if it's gonna last well i mean it's winding down and um compare compared to how it used to be it's now in an actual like i can i could easily replace discord with this it's n- it's not a problem it it's really not um and honestly as uh, as long as you have a, a a pretty decent like i mean you don't need the best but at least a decent internet connection jitsi works pretty well like i don't that's why i, don't I have was any saying issues. For, for me anything that runs jits on the jitsi back end mm-hmm if you if you like well, staring at my avatar, mo- most of the time. But I mean, okay. Also, if you're joining into calls with like you know like, let's say it's like a distro tube, like you know Patreon call or or whatever with that Not many only people. On my, uh, even yeah. on my podcast, we were just two people. It was well, just, to, to be okay. to be fair, Tyler, you and I have had some very interesting experiences with Jitsi over the last couple of years, so <laughs> it can. Well, have I mean, like down. that's. That's that, that's kind of what I'm trying to say. Like, compared to the last time that we were using Jitsi, and I mean, really, I never pay it. Like, re- really, we don't really normally have that many issues when uh, Josh does distro hacking. But I haven't used Jitsi intentionally for a long period of time until very recently. And I mean, I've spent over. Uh, probably 14 hours uh the past two days on jitsi like in meetings in calls sharing webcams and it's it's been fine um yeah no for issues good whatsoever. like you said like you put it for good connections no problem but for bad connections yeah. like mine i want to have a decent conversation with someone on video 
they tend to stare at my avatar longer than they, they stare at my face. So, All right. Uh, and if I want to share a screen, it goes... I don't know why they have it set at 5 frames per second by, uh, by default uh, when you share a screen in Jitsi, in the Jitsi Electron app I'm talking. Uh, so uh, they need to set it to 30 minimum, but not at 5. All right, Steve, your thingy oh, of the week, please. This? My thingy of the week is a, going to be a, a few minutes. All right. Are you ready, peeps? It's zero mm-hmm. Linux on the Steam Deck. That's my thingy of the week. Why am I talking about this? Uh, not advertising zero Linux. No way will I recommend users install zero Linux on their Steam Deck. It's just something I uh, discovered by installing zero Linux on the Steam Deck. I discovered that Zero Linux on the Steam Deck runs up to, if not more, fast 40% faster than desktop mode on Steam OS. And no, I did not, for the people who have not yet asked, but will ask, I have not wiped Steam OS off of the Steam Deck. I just installed Zero Linux on an external SATA SSD, to which, uh, which I connect uh, to the dock and you know you can set your external dr- uh, uh, the steam deck to boot yeah. off of the external drive by default just by going and set it and this is weird in the steam deck bios they don't when you go into boot you uh, you cannot s- select which device to be the the first bootable thing it just tells you first uh, last and disable <laughs> so you don't know what first is what last is you don't know nothing it's just you just have to test all of them so basically, you set the BIOS to uh, to boot first. First means the USB device. Whatever USB is connected, it will boot that first. Uh, so when you set it to first and save, whatever USB device you have connected will boot off of that. And I have Grub running flawlessly. It detects SteamOS. Uh, it detects Zero Linux and SteamOS under that. And SteamOS, for some reason, has multiple entries. I don't know why. But uh, maybe because Probably it's a BTRFS snapshots. system. Yeah, probably. Yeah, snapshots and BTRFS. Uh, because, yes, the Steam Deck uh, has BTRFS partitions. And uh, uh, what do you call them? Um, 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 vol- uh, sub- sub-volumes. Sub-volumes. Yeah. So uh, that, go- that tells you how much I use BTRFS. I don't even <laughs> know what they call them. <laughs> but anyway... Uh, it runs 40%, up to 40% faster in everything. I've been running, I've been using the Steam Deck as my primary desktop in the office because I leave the house to go to a small office now. But in the office, I don't use a computer. I use just the Steam Deck. I build my packages on it. I uh, browse the internet. I listen to, uh, to, to Spotify. I, uh, what else do I do? I built the ISOs. They take 40 minutes compared to 10 minutes on my main rig, but it does everything I needed to do flawlessly. And I ran Zonotic on it and Zero AD for Mr. Zero AD over here. Uh, So they run at 100 plus frames per second on the Steam Deck. I can't think of anything more painful than running Zero AD on a Steam Deck. I'm just, I'm just saying full detail, full detail, and that game is not very easy to run. Trust me. Uh, uh, for APUs, it was a surprise to me. It came as a surprise to me because they're upping the detail level every version they release. Mm-hmm. So it's getting close to Unreal Tournament, uh, Unreal Tournament the Black Edition levels of detail. So uh, it ran... Zonotic at 130 frames per second and zero AD, it ran it at like 300 <laughs> on the Steam Deck. <laughs> full detail, full blast. Okay, that's... so I'm like at 1080p on a device that was that has a resolution lower than 1080p. So uh, and I have it on a screen, of course, with a key, uh, USB keyboard and mm. speakers connected. That makes to it the, more to the thing. All right, so people. You can install, what I wanted to say by this is the following. People, if you have a Steam Deck and you want to use it on the go uh, as both your desktop 
uh, and your gaming uh, device, don't use the desktop shipped by Valve. That one will limit you uh, up, down, left, and right. Just install the distro of your the, the distro of your choice. Recommend Arch because it's more un it understands more the Steam Deck. Uh, install Arch or Ar any Arch based distro uh, on an external drive. It will not touch Steam OS. Don't worry, Steam OS is going to remain as you left it. It's not going to touch it. Just install it on an external USB uh, SD card wherever, and boot off of that. And you will be able. To, the only thing that is annoying about having a desktop like that, you cannot use uh, the touchscreen keyboard of KDE is very touchy feely. Uh, it only works. Uh, it only works on the SDDM. It doesn't work on the desktop. To have one on the desktop, you have to install one from KDE Store, and the one on KDE Store is very tiny, <laughs> so <laughs> it doesn't work. Uh, so you have or to figure just... your way, but I don't recommend using the touchscreen. Just connect it to an external display on the go. Use it as your desktop because <sighs> the Steam Deck is, as Tyler puts it, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the best. This is how Tyler puts what, it. <laughs> what, what you can do is be pro with it and just go ahead and install Gentoo on that bad boy, you, and or, then uh, use GNOME with accessibility features. Or Bam. you could do like I do and leave it in its case all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's definitely an option. That's what basically yeah. what I. This do. is definitely an option, but I'm, I, I'm, I'm saying I found a new, uh, uh, new love for the Steam Deck, because when the power goes out, I don't need a UPS and beeping noises and five minutes or whatever. It's got a battery life that's gonna last like three hours, uh, and it's like a laptop, but it's a portable desktop. I, I was thinking of buying a, you know, those portable mini PCs. Uh, I was like, why the hell do I need that? They don't have a battery. They, uh, I have a Steam Deck. If only it ran Arch. And then I installed Zero Linux on an external SSD, and I was the happiest man alive. We're very happy for you, so Steve. I have a beautiful thing. All right. Do it, people. All right. My don't hesitate. Do it. All right. Damn it. <laughs> My thingy of the week, just real quickly, is Tuba. It looks like this. It is a Mastodon client for Linux. It is a GTK client. So if you're more familiar with GTK stuff, it looks really, Tokadon. really good. What? Tokadon. I don't know what that means. Um, anyways, the... Tokadon. Tokadon. You made a video about it. Tokadon. Oh, I did? <laughs> I make too many yeah. videos. It's the KDE version of what you're talking about. Oh, oh yeah. I don't version. think I made a video about that, but... Um... I do believe I've heard about it before. Anyways, now that Tuba is pretty awesome. It has all the features you'd expect out of a, a a Mastodon client. I will say that it does look better not full screen. So if, if if I make this full screen, you can see it. There's a lot of blank space there. It'd be cool if they had like multiple columns and stuff like a la TweetDeck, but they don't. Um, but other than that, it still is a very good client. If you want a native client for Linux to talk on a Mastodon, um, it's really good. So that is it for us this episode of the Linux Cast. So again, we record this live every Saturday around 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern time if you want to join us live. Uh, the replay of the podcast is no longer going to be available for everybody. That will be available for patrons only. The edited version of the podcast will be available to everyone uh, Saturday nights, usually around 10 or 11 o'clock uh, Eastern time. Uh, it's just easier for me to edit it and make it sound really good. So it, it's it's better that way. The audio will be, continue to be available to everyone available on Sunday afternoons. So there's that. Uh, before I jump out of this, we should take a moment to thank my current patrons. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thanks so very, very much for your support. Thanks, everybody, for that. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next week. It's uh, We always have a good time, so join us live, and we'll see you then. If I'm still alive. If you, if I'm dead, you'll Boy. be first to know. Well, that ended on a, morbid, on a morbid note. <laughs> <laughs>